yeah, so basically um, I'm a paediatrician and my name is Dr. Molly Gupta and I've been working in the UK as a consultant for 11 years. I've only just recently stopped work in my job just this April. But I, um, I have a passion with um, for basically lifestyle related illnesses and I've always had an interest in nutrition, health, fitness um, and prevention. And um, over the years, I've acquired quite a lot of knowledge in this area, which I'd like to share. And I have been sharing actually for the last few years. I have um, two groups. I have a Facebook group. I have a WhatsApp group, which is what I initially started. And the aim was to help people and educate people about lifestyle changes and how to sort of improve your, um, you know, your lifestyle to prevent the risk of developing lifestyle related illnesses like type 2 diabetes, like cancer, like um, all the weight related illnesses, like cardiovascular disease, even dementia, all of these are related to weight. So um, to a large extent. So I've been doing that and I've been um, very happy because a lot of people have actually lost enormous amounts of weight. Um, some people have lost around 15 kilograms, up to 20 kilograms. Um, some I know of and some I just bump into here and there and then I see, oh, you've, <laughs> you've got one person I actually met um, not long ago. I didn't even recognize her. She'd lost so much weight. So people, some of the people in my group are hidden people who don't tell me everything, but I see that something's happening. And some of the people I know of, and at least one person has come out of diabetes type 2 by losing 15 kilograms. And I don't know that person, but she's on my Facebook group. And then another person who is hopefully going to join today, she has come out of pre-diabetes. But the thing is, once you're out of these things, they're not lifelong, you're out of them unless you carry on. So uh, this is a lifestyle change which we have to make basically for life. So I'm going to talk about that today. Um, just one second, just to remind myself. Yeah. So yeah, so I have an interest in this area and um, I'm going to talk about mainly two things today. One is the type 2 diabetes, how to prevent it, how to come out of it, how to come out of pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, but also, um, you know, this is more so possible in the first six years. After that, it can become difficult, but still things can be done to improve your management and maybe try and come off your medication. I'm going to actually pin myself because um, it's a little bit distracting when I not pinned. Okay, right, that way is better. So that is the main thing. And now weight management comes alongside the same because weight management and diabetes management, they're actually very much linked because diabetes management is all about weight loss. So what I'm going to tell you is um, about type 2 diabetes, what has changed, our knowledge of type 2 diabetes has changed. So initially, you know, there are a few alarming things about type 2 diabetes that people may not be aware of. So diabetes, um, you know, out of all the diabetics, you know, there's two main types. There's type one, there's type two. Type one is what happens in childhood, early onset diabetes as a child. Type two, until recently, we thought it is an adult onset illness. But actually, we are now seeing children having type two diabetes. So this is now becoming a big problem. And what is even more alarming is that Two thirds of the world's diabetics are actually Indian, type two diabetics, and um, also it is globally rising all over the world. Before it used to be an illness of just the rich people who have more access to food, and now even poor people are getting diabetes because food has become too easily available, and people are not just eating too much food, but we're actually eating the wrong food as well because it's all westernized, all processed food. So all of this is linked. And um, and the other thing is that, um, I was going to say, so childhood diabetes, diabetes uh, in terms of the total diabetics in UK, 90% um, of it is type two, 90%. Around 8% is type one. And children, are, even children in the UK, are now getting type two diabetes. So under the age of 19, which actually even for me was alarming. Because as a pediatrician, uh, you know, working in the hospital and all that, I've never seen a type 2 diabetic child. It was always type 1. But now it is increasing and that's all to do with weight 
management. So now I'm going to tell you about a little study which is really important because in 2011 what happened was there is a professor called Professor Roy Taylor. He is um, a consultant of medicine and metabolic medicine in Newcastle University. So he is the one who has actually done the research and found that um, type 2 diabetes is actually all about excess fat in the liver and the pancreas. So the liver, you know, it is an organ in our body and where our metabolism happens of glucose, protein, everything, you know, digestion, metabolism occurs there. And say, pancreas is an organ where insulin is produced, which is the hormone that you need to keep your blood sugar levels stable. Yeah. So when we eat something, we release most of the time we are producing glucose in our bloodstream. That glucose, then we have to maintain that level of glucose, the body, the pancreas need to release insulin. Yeah, so we have type 1 di uh, diabetes is where we don't produce enough insulin. But type 2 diabetes, there is enough insulin production. But what happens is that insulin is not working well. So the role of insulin is to get that glucose that sugar, that glucose, into the cells of our body, into the liver and into the muscle, mainly. And what's happening is in type 2 diabetes, there's so much fat inside the liver um, that that liver is not able to take that glucose, that sugar, from the blood, and it maintains a high blood sugar level. Now, when this has been happening for a long time, a long time, a long time, and your insulin is so resist, your liver has become so resistant, you have developed type 2 diabetes. Now, why is it such a problem and why, you know, why is type 2 diabetes a problem? Well, this is an illness with many complications, okay? It reduces your, your lifespan because the risk of dying from these complications is quite high. There is a quite high risk of developing stroke, heart disease, um, having limb damage because it affects the nerves, the, the nerves in your feet, you start to lose sensation if your diabetes is not well managed, you've had sugar in your bloodstream going around, affecting your blood vessels, your nerves for such a long time, it starts to lose its sensitivity in the feet and the skin, the feet especially because we're walking on the feet, there's more damage, risk of damage to your feet, um, but it can happen at other places too, but the feet is where you, we tend to get the, you know, the injuries and gangrene and then limb amputation is a risk eye complications can be you can become blind from diabetes if it's not well managed you can have kidney failure for diabetes so it is not a nice illness it is not a pleasant so these are all the bad things about it but the good thing is i want this to be a positive um, session today i want it to be something that you manage to take home and say okay i'm going to manage my diabetes this way i'm going to come out of my diabetes i'm going to lose my weight because um, diabetes can be reversed by losing a good amount of weight by getting rid of that fat from the liver and the pancreas. So in that study, when what he did was he put, um, uh, it was a small study initially, but what he did was he put um, everybody in that study, they were diabetic, he put them on a low calorie diet of about 750 calories yeah, a day. So that low calorie diet, what it did was uh, within eight weeks, he found that the liver had lost its fat, the pancreas then lost its fat, and the patients became non-diabetic. Okay, so the, the conclusion was that this is an illness of overeating, of being overweight. This is a majority of type 2 diabetes, you could say almost 100%, very few type 2 diabetics are not because of this. There are other risk factors, but this is the main risk factor is weight. So um, that is one thing. And then a larger study uh, took place between 2014 to 2017. They recruited around 306 patients across you know, UK. And um, this was across GP surgeries and looking at if this low calorie model will work, the weight management will work. And what's been shown is from that study, which is still ongoing, I believe, is after a year they found that still 50, around 50% 50 were in remission from type 2 diabetes. That this time they put them on 850 calories, um, between 800 to 850 calories. And um, after two years, around a third still stayed out of diabetes. So it, is, it has been well shown that type, type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle related illness. Okay, Now, because it's all about weight management, that's why I've combined weight loss with this talk. Because if, you, if diabetics can lose weight this way, normal people with a weight problem can also lose weight this way. 
Now, what is, what is it that I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what are the, um, you know, how does this work? So what, what do we need to do? So there's four things that we need to look at. One is our diet, uh, be it diabetes, pre-diabetes, be it weight loss. You do have to lose a large amount of weight. It's around minimum of 15 kilograms for most people to come out. Yeah, um, it's around 10 to 20 percent of your body weight that you need to lose. And the sooner you lose it, it's actually easier because if you lose it faster, you get motivation. If it drags on, if you say, OK, I'm in six months, I'm going to lose 10 kilograms then I'm going to. It actually what happens is you don't see the results and you're keeping your blood sugars elevated for longer but also you'll lose motivation and it's hard to keep up. So this eight week plan that has been devised is actually very effective. There is a book based on this by Prof um, Dr. Michael Mosley. It's called The Blood Sugar Diet Book. So if anybody wants to buy that book, I would strongly recommend it. But I am going to talk about those things and I do mention all of what's in that book in my tips and in my videos. So, um, so what, do, what is the first thing to do? So first thing to do is obviously you need to weigh yourself and you need to look at your BMI. So this is the other thing we need to consider in Asians, especially uh, the BMI to be out of diabetes or prevent diabetes or what is healthy to avoid weight related problems is to have a BMI less than 23. So BMI is body mass index and it is calculated. There are calculators. You can go on the NHS um, like website and there is a calculator there you can search for bmi calculator um, and nhs it will come up all you have to do is put your weight there and your height there and it will show your bmi now uh, this is not just about diabetics this is for everyone all indians all asians um, need should have a bmi less than 23 ideally to prevent lifestyle related illnesses for caucasians it's slightly different for them, it's like they say 25. We are very different from Caucasians. So one of the things um, in the Western world, what happens is when we come and live here or, you know, we're surrounded by Caucasians, we start to compare with them. We start to eat the same food and our body is not used to it. And our body is very different. Our muscle distribution is different. What's been found is that one reason Indians may be at higher risk of this is we don't have enough muscle. What the reason for this, not very clear, whether it's lack of exercise, whether it's just the way our body is, because different races do have slightly different amounts of muscle and bone structure. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, but also the other thing is we store fat around our belly, around our abdomen. Now, the risk about storing the fat around the abdomen, it is very it's quite a serious risk because what that means is we have actually fat not just in this underneath the skin which is your subcutaneous fat but we actually have a higher risk of having fat in our organs or around the organs meaning the liver the pancreas the heart all the organs the viscera that we call the inner internal organs and that is where it carries the risk of having cardiovascular disease diabetes and or metabolic disease any cholesterol being high blood all of the things that are linked with this are um, to do with long-term health. We do not want that fat to be excessive around our waist. So that is one thing we need to be aware of. So you need to calculate your body mass index, uh, measure your waistline. Now, how to measure your waistline? Go in between, you know, when you, um, if you look at your, feel your rib cage from the top, you feel the lowest um, where you can feel the bone, the hard bit, and then you go to the lower part of your, I'll show you on myself. So basically you, you feel here and then you feel here where you feel the bone around your waist and you feel the bone at the lower end of the rib cage. In between that, you measure the waist. That is where you need to measure your waist. And that waistline, we need to, uh, once you've measured that waist, keep a record of these things, your weight, your BMI, and your waistline. Now your waistline, again, there are different um, for Caucasians, slightly different, and for Asians, especially Indians, uh, it is slightly different. We need to be less around the waist, even less than them. So we need to be, for women, at least less than 31.5 inches, ideally. That is what we need to be. And for men, should be less than 35 inches. That is your border, ideally more. 
So that is your that is the like the cutoff for health. So the lower you can make it, these are the things that are guide us and tell us how much is our risk of developing long term complications of this sort, like type two diabetes, heart disease. Now, um, these measurements are slightly different for Caucasians. They have a cutoff of 40 inches for men, which is quite big. For, for Indians, that is like more than obese. That is very obese for us. Okay, we, we, that is very unhealthy. Too much. Okay, and for uh, women, it is 35 inches for Caucasians. But actually, even for them, 31.5 is a better uh, one. But 35 is definitely not right. So we need to be mindful of that, that these measurements um, are important. Then we come to muscle. Our muscle is very important. And I'll talk about these things, but these for a baseline, I would like people to measure their weight, their body mass index and their waistline. Now I'm going to talk about how we can now lose this weight. So have a goal in your mind that how much you have to want to lose. And it's an eight week period to do it in. And obviously you want to come, your BMI wants to be less than 23, your waistline, you would like to drop off many, maybe many inches to become it become less than 31.5 for women and less than 35, ideally around 32 inches for men. Yeah, that is what ideally you would like. So have that in mind. But a good way is your weight. And I would like people to weigh themselves daily. Weigh yourself daily at the same time. And one way of doing this is to just keep a scales in your bathroom in the morning after passing urine, you weigh yourself at the same time and then just keep it in mind. It helps monitor, but it also helps you, you know, know what's going on on a daily basis. And the week waistline, you can measure weekly um, and BMI, you can measure, you know, uh, you'll get an idea when things are in the right direction. You can check your BMI in a month. Now, um, for what, what can be done? So good news is these are this condition is reversible. So don't feel like you can't do it. Yes, you can. It can be done. Type 2 diabetes can be got rid of, um, especially in the first six years. Studies have shown that. Weight management can be done at any age. Yes, it gets harder as you get older because if you have health problems where you can't move around, it can become harder, but it's possible. So I'm going to give the same plan. The way, the way to do it is... In the from day one, you restrict your calories. Now, if this has been shown in studies, calorie re uh, reduction is actually good for our health. I have a motto in my head, eat less to stay well, eat less to stay healthy, because we are eating too much. You know, we we are surrounded by food. We are surrounded by food. You just need to leave the house. There's everywhere. There'll be like a Burger King, this King, that King. If there's something or the other where you think, oh, should we just get a bite there, here or there? I mean, I'm vegetarian, I don't go there. But but it's tempting to people, you know. At the same time in the house, your fridge will be packed with food, your cupboards will be packed with food, there'll be snacks, there'll be biscuits, there'll be this and that. Every now and then you get up from your chair, you feel like eating something, it has to stop. We have to think of this plan as a structure that is for our health. We're going to reduce the calories for two months minimum to 800 calories, maximum 1,000. We do it between. Now, w one better way is to calculate the calories of your food. And there are ways you can do that, you know, like for every single item you're eating. The other way, which is an easier way, is whatever you are eating right now, just half it. So, for instance, if you're having breakfast in the morning, whatever you're having, half the quantity of that breakfast. Yeah, it would be good to know the calories. It does help. And for diabetics, I would say you, you must do it. You should look at the calories. But if you're non-diabetic, just trying to lose weight, simply halving it will make a big difference. Then it depends not just the calories, but like you do the same for all your meals and try to. So it's around 200 to 250 calorie per meal you want for breakfast around 200 calories, 200 calories for lunch, 200 calories for dinner. In between, you've got a little bit of room to adjust 100 calories here and there. If you want to have a snack like a fruit or something, I would keep your snacks to only fruits, salads and nuts and seeds. That, that's what you should eat. These are actually good healthy foods with nutrition anyway. 
that they are good things to eat. You don't want to eat any crisps, chocolates, biscuits, um, any sort of snack bars, anything containing sugar or fat, saturated fat. So I'm coming to that in a second, but calories, the first one to count your calories and to look at what you're eating in the morning, what you're eating at lunch, what you're eating at dinner, and just um, also look at when you're cooking your meal, how much oil you are putting in, that needs to be halved. On your plate, if you're um, chapatis, if you're having two, make it one. If you're having bread, um, make it from two, make it one. If you're having a jacket potato, instead of a full one, go for half. These are the things I'm talking about, simple things, whatever amount of... Um, so that's in terms of like your calories. So one is the calories we need to look at. Two is the um, sugar. Number two is sugar. Sugar, you have to... Basically, all added sugar needs to go. So if you're having a cup of tea in the morning and you're putting some sugar, like Indians often like to put a teaspoon of sugar in their tea. Some don't, but it's a common thing. Or coffee, you have to, you need to remove it. So these are simple things because taking away sugar will make an instant improvement in your, not only in your weight, but actually in your health. Because what's happening is we are consuming too much sugar. Because sugar is everywhere. There's not there's sugar you put in, but there's sugar in items that you buy from the shops. Like you buy any sort of packaging, um, it's processed food. It will have sugar. All you need to do is look at the label behind, and I will talk about labels as well. But sugar is really important, and WHO has put a limit on sugar as six teaspoons per day maximum but that is a limit that is not what's recommended we don't really need any added sugar because all the food we eat you know the carbs that we eat they become sugar so there is no need for it especially if you're overweight or you're diabetic there is no need for it occasionally i'm not you know in the this is the first eight weeks you don't want to do it at all now, I can't believe it's already saying that it's running out of time. It feels like we just, uh, uh, so in 10 minutes we have. So I think it's going to. So Molly, do you want to use my link and then I make you host? Um, and then you yeah, can you... carry on continues, yeah? Yeah, do, do you want to do that now or should we do it? Yeah, do you want to, I give you the link to everyone. If you can note the link is 490 -31... There's a bit of an issue because people who may join later, they won't know. So I think what we'll do... I'll I send you the link, yeah? Or I'll just stop in five minutes and we'll just rejoin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then. Um, so at the moment, it is um, showing me 10 minutes, 10 minutes left. When it shows five minutes left, or, or should I just let it go fully and then... Yeah. Okay. Let it go and then when, they will stop automatically. Yeah. Let it go. Right. Yeah. So I am, yeah, I am going slow and I am trying to explain a bit. I didn't realize time is passing so quick. So, um, yeah, so calories is important. Sugar is important. And we have to look at all the labels that we have. And I have a cereal packet here to show you. So this is a cereal that I do have in the morning. It's Lizzie's granola. Can you see it? Um, it's got low sugar, but basically low sugar means anything less than five grams per hundred grams is low sugar. Yeah. So here it says... Uh, if you look at the labels, it's really important whenever you pick up a packaged item, look at the label, especially with cereals. Cereals can be packed with sugar. So um, this one, it says, so you will have carbohydrates and that says 45.2 is carbohydrate because obviously this is uh, nuts and seeds and it's uh, uh, oats it will, and pumpkin seeds. It will have carbohydrate. But what you want to look at is how much is the sugar. So 3.8 grams is sugar per 100 grams. Yeah. And you have then the next thing to look at is fiber. Fiber is 9.7 grams, which is really good. So what we're looking for is what is the ratio? If any item contains sugar, you want to see how much is the fiber. If the fiber is more than the sugar, it's really good. If the fiber is equal to the sugar, it's still good. If the fiber is just under the sugar, like the, ratio, the, the higher the fiber content compared to the sugar makes it a better item to have because fiber release, re slows down the release of sugar when you're having the food, yeah? So the higher the fiber, the better. Some items won't have fiber at all. They're not good. When they have sugar but no fiber, that is not a good item, other than fruits, because sometimes even fruits have fiber, but um, yeah, they have fiber, so it's not a problem. But if, the, if, there are, if there's an item without fiber, it's not a good item to pick up when there is sugar in that food. I will talk about that. So sugar is the next next one. You'd want to remove added sugar and you want to look at everything you're eating. 
from morning to evening look at every single item does it contain sugar now the things that uh, are fine to have are milk it will have some natural sugar but it's not added sugar so that's fine yogurt where you're going for natural yogurt greek yogurt is better because it is higher in protein and protein is very protective it is good so that is okay um and um other items i'm trying to think natural things with sugar fruits are fine but you have to be careful not having too many sugar containing foods to get the fruits together so i'll talk about that but fruit is fine fruit is good for us vegetables will have natural sugar that is fine when we go for whole grains they will have their own sugar but that is fine if we're whole grain so we want to avoid processed packaged food with sugar so i think uh yeah still have time okay so um right in terms of after sugar i'm going to talk about um yeah processed food so basically uh, processed food is anything that comes in packaging other than vegetables fruits frozen vegetables frozen fruit nuts seeds these are fine yeah everything else like your um your frozen brate frozen roti frozen um namke um whatever you find frozen tikki samosa your namkeen your um frozen uh, meats frozen you know the ones that are ready made meals all ready made meals are processed foods they contain sugar they contain salt they contain saturated fat they have little fiber and they have little nutrition basically they have to add these things to preserve the item and during the processing um a lot of the nutrition is removed processed food will help you gain weight help you become diabetic uh, help you increase your cholesterol uh, your blood pressure everything we need to avoid these and try to go for whole foods mainly plant based whole foods which is nuts seeds fruits vegetables pulses whole grain um like if you make with chapati you want to go with whole grain and if you try things like johar bajra rai balga wheat which is dalia these are really good items to choose oats is good for breakfast so these are the whole grains nuts and seeds or you can snack on fruit you can snack on salads you can snack on um raw vegetables you can snack on um if you're you know have pl- lots and lots of water increase your water intake and do not have juices especially fruit juices do not have fruit juices do not have smoothies they are packed with sugar yeah if you want to make your own smoothie occasionally um i wouldn't recommend it for the diabetic group or even if you're trying to lose a huge amount of weight in the first 8 weeks but gradually later on you can use a um a natural yogurt you could add fresh fruit you can make your smoothie don't add any sugar you can have it occasionally but better than smoothie is eating the fruit as it is because you want your taste buds and you want every like occasionally having a smoothie is not a problem in that way but ideally we want to make changes that we want to stick with for life we don't want to get into habits of having shakes and drinks that are not natural and they've been blended down and some of their nutrition you know although it's in there it's in a different form when we take it as a smoothie form so it's more for taste occasionally um uh, 4 minutes to go we'll give it 2 more minutes um so that's about processed food also alcohol is very important now people think alcohol may be good for you because it may be having some heart health benefits whereas that can be true in small quantities it is actually going to help you gain weight it will actually uh, because it c- contains a huge amount of calories but it also has a, a different mechanism of metabolism that improve that increases your weight and your waistline increases your risk of developing cancer it is a toxin so i would in these first 8 weeks definitely do not have but if you're going if you really need to have don't have more than 1 to 2 units but i would recommend not to have alcohol so that is something that need to be mindful of um what is it that you want to eat so i've talked about and what not to eat now what to eat need to eat plant based whole foods if you want to, if you're a non non vegetarian you can eat oily fish is good for you have it, you can have it twice a week again portion size matters with everything where we are cutting down the calories you still have to half what you're eating or just make sure your meal is no more than 200 to 250 calories and fish does have quite a lot of calories it does have some benefits because of the 
omega-3 and the good fats, but it has calories. So you need to be mindful of that. Um, lean meat like chicken is also okay, but I, but I would say eat less meat and go more for plant-based food. Plant-based food has less saturated fat, has, is less burden to your heart, okay? It is more risk of, less risk of developing heart disease and all the weight issues. There is less calories in plant-based food if you eat it the right way. It's better for our health. But you can have lean meats uh, occasionally um, or once or twice a week, what, whatever. Just make sure the calories are not over. So whole grains that are good, rye, bulgur wheat pulses, and um, you know you can buy atta, which is like the multigrain. They say multigrain, they're not amazing. You want to, you may want to add things to it. You may want to add some besa, your chaneka atta, chana atta, you know, like you can buy, or you might want to add some, uh, sometimes johar, bajra. These are really good for cholesterol management and sugar management and weight. They, they, in the sense that you still have to eat the portion less, but it is a better alternative to just having atta definitely don't eat white atta don't eat white flour brown rice is very good you can eat brown rice again portion size has to be low if you're eating four tablespoons make it two if you're eating um, you know having two chapati make it one if you're having one make it half because you're trying to lose weight we got up to fruits. So fruits have um, many benefits, actually, because people think it's high in sugar. Yes, they are high in sugar. But the thing about fruits is because they have a lot of fiber with them, especially if you eat the skin with the fruit, like, for instance, you know, apple, if you eat it with the skin, and most people do, but some people in the past, they like to <laughs> peel it. It's better not to. I know in India, there's a problem because of the pesticides and things. But here, if you buy organic, there is no issue with that. I mean, it's a bit more expensive, but to be quite honest, it is safer. If you don't buy organic, I think you can still like soak it in vinegar and stuff, do things like that, a bit of hassle. But there is nutrition in the, in the skin and there is fiber in the skin and the thing about fiber is it really is helpful not just for uh, weight loss but actually it is helpful for diabetics so fiber will slow down the release of sugar into your blood it is really important it has more benefits than that it will actually help you reduce your cholesterol because it reduces your cholesterol absorption it reduces your sugar absorption so um, fiber is multi uh, beneficial and it, there is research to show that fiber reduces the risk of cancer especially bowel cancer um, and um, so fi fiber is essential it is something that is lacking in our diet especially in the western world um, if you think about coke, like what most people eat in this country the, who are non-veg they have more meat on their plate and they will have a little bit of vegetable and um, I don't know what else, but it's mainly meat or fish or eggs. None, there's no fiber in any animal product, whether it's milk, whether it's your um, eggs, whether it's meat, fish, nothing. None of these have fiber. Fiber is an essential element which is missing largely in the Western diet. But nowadays also is missing in the Indian and you know developing countries because people are all becoming Western. They all want a burger or a pizza or um, or something similar or noodles or um, none of these things have fiber so noodles um, if you go for now people think wagamama is you know I don't want to criticize any particular but the thing is you think of these things they're all healthy food but actually the only healthy part in there is the tofu and the vegetables right the noodles itself they are not very good because they're processed now, if they sold whole wheat noodles, it would be better. And they actually used to do a, um, a dish with whole wheat. I don't know what happened. They got rid of it. And it's all processed food now. It's not good. Okay. Occasionally, if you have it, fine. But um, when you're trying to lose weight, you want to avoid these things. And I will give you a little tip about eating out as well, what to do. But in this eight-week period, we have to be very careful. You don't really want to eat out much. You don't want to have takeaways. You want to limit your calories. You want to be really strict and rigid with it because in that eight weeks, you are going to see results, massive results. Once you start receiving, getting those results, you will be so motivated, you will want to carry on. Once you carry on after that, if this carries on for a year or two and you're finding that you're actually done really good to your body, you will find out that the changes that have happened you are able to go back to a little bit more calories after some time and still not put on weight. That is the thing about sticking to this diet for at least eight weeks. 
So um, in terms of fruits and vegetables, they do another thing. What they have is they increase the good bacteria in our gut, in our um, intestines. The good bacteria has been, sh this good bacteria that they increase has been shown, it's called microbiome, diverse microbiome. When you have different types of bacteria, it's actually been found to be something that's found in people who are not overweight and are slim. It has been found to be healthy and it found in healthy people. So we need to make that microbiome diverse, increase the bacteria in there by consuming different types of fruits and vegetables. Don't stick to the same and don't count potato in your vegetables. It is a starchy carbohydrate. Similarly, when you're diabetic and if you're trying to lose weight, I would say don't eat much of the starchy carbohydrates like your, you know, keep them less. Potato is the one to definitely eat less much less like if you're having potato consider it as your carb that day so if in place of a chapati you're having a jacket potato fine have it with vegetables have it with pulses but don't consider that as a vegetable you still have to have your vegetables on the side you, you want to basically you want a balanced diet you want your plate consisting half of vegetables and salad so a lot of these if they can be steamed it's better because lower in calories um, you can drizzle a bit of olive oil if you want on the salad, but keep it low in calories. On the other side, you want to have a protein base like a dal or, and you want to have a, a carbohydrate slow release, something like a, a whole meal chapati or brown rice. But a one fourth portion is that one fourth portion is your protein source like dal or um, beans like chana, rajma, something like that. Half the plate is vegetables and salad. That is what you want on your plate. So uh, in terms of, um, yeah, so in between when you're hungry, you can have some nuts, you can have some seeds, you can have fruit, you can have salad, that's it. And you can have water, don't go for sugar containing, don't go for juice. Fruit juice is actually packed with sugar. And the problem is with it is you don't get the fiber. So it goes straight away, that sugar goes into your blood. So it's not good for diabetic control. It's not good for weight management. It will in because ex excess sugar it will become fat. After, when you have too much sugar, it eventually turns into fat and you deposit around your belly. Okay, so these are things. So uh, to just summarize what I've said so far, reduce your calories to eight hundred per day, maximum a thousand per day. For diabetics, I would say keep it to eight hundred. Other way, easy way of doing it is just simply half everything you are eating. Try to eat more vegetables and fruits, nuts, seeds. Drink lots of water. Take out added sugar and do not and check all labels on everything you buy. Minimize your processed food, which is packaged food, and stick to whole foods. Whole food is food that comes in the way it comes. Even cheese is a processed food and it is packed with fat. So when you go for pizza or you buy cheese slices, be very careful. Go for low reduced cheese and have less quantity, much less quantity. Um, right, so that's in terms of food. Good fats are your olive oil. When you're cooking, the oils to use which are good for you are olive oil, avocado oil, rapeseed oil. Um, even sunflower seed oil can be used. Coconut oil occasionally can be used. But what I would say is vary them and rotate them around so you get benefits from different oils. Olive oil has been proven to be heart healthy. It is a very good oil. It comes as part of a Mediterranean diet which has been found to be the best diet in terms of weight management, in terms of long-term health, uh, cardiovascular risk, everything. So olive olives are good, but they have a lot of salt, but olive oil can be used in cooking. Just keep the quantity less because it's still a fat. It has the same amount of calories that you have in ghee or butter. Okay, so these uh, that's what you can have. Um, now, in terms of eating out, so I'll give you a little thing about eating out. In this eight weeks, I would recommend you don't. But if you really feel like it once, you want to go somewhere, go for somewhere where it's you're eating something. I mean, ideally, the diabetics, I would say, no, please don't go out to eat in this eight weeks. Please just be very strict. Even people who are trying to lose a large amount of weight, try to minimize it. But yes, it's hard. So if you fancy going out once in a while, which means like once in two weeks, maximum once a week I would not do more than that when you're trying to lose weight it's not an easy job to lose weight when you're going out it's full of calories it doesn't matter which restaurant you go to full of calories processed food high in fat uh, little fiber little nutrition it's just for taste 
don't have the starter, don't have the pudding, drink only water, no alcohol, no juice, split your meal, whatever you have in your main course with your partner, have half the meal. And I'll tell you what, you may think I'm thin, but I still do that with my husband today because I'm worried my husband will gain weight. But even if I have a normal big meal that you get in a restaurant, it's too much for me. That meal, you know, it's, it is just too much. And we get used to eating what we eat. So in the past years back when I didn't split the meals, when I wasn't this conscious of anything, I was a conscious, but not to this extent, maybe, um, or I didn't maybe have the knowledge, it's come over years, um, I would have a full meal, like I'd go to Wagamama or somewhere, have the whole thing. It's too much. Every meal in a restaurant they give you on your plate, it's too much. Even if you don't have the starter, even if you don't have the pudding, just the one plate of food, it's too much. So make it half. So these are things that are difficult, but these really will work. Right, next we'll come to exercise because I don't want to keep just going on and on. I want to take some questions as well. Um, exercise is really important. Diet is number one. Exercise is number two. With exercise, you need to do daily exercise. Now, the recommendations from NHS and from, you know, if you go to any sort of um, reputed health um sort of website will be to do 150 minutes of moderate activity per week but I would recommend you do a minimum of 30 minutes of moderate activity every day because they say most days yeah and you need that to get to get the number right if you do 30 minutes of aerobic exercise and in between you do some high intensity interval training which is just a minute or so or 30 seconds to a minute in between where you're running really fast on the spot or you're doing some star jumps or you're doing skipping like you know anything that makes you a little bit breathless even going up and down the stairs if you try and do it fast even walking brisk can count if you go back and forth walking brisk in your garden or outside but you're getting a little bit breathless you're feeling that your heart is getting a bit you know you're getting a bit sweaty you're getting a bit breathless that is what you want to do so you want to brisk walk and in between you do a little jog or a little run or you do some star jumps or you do some zumba or you make yourself a dance or you do whatever you want to do but you just make your heart pump you make yourself a little breathless that oh i can't carry on anymore now i'm going to stop now i'll go to the moderate exercise or the light activity then in a few minutes i'm going to go back to this you need to do this five minutes of intensity high intensity training per day has been found to be as effective as 15 minutes of um, high intent um, of like they call it um, moderate uh, severe intensity it's been the same as severe intensity 15 minutes five minutes of a high intensity and your 30 minutes of moderate activity is the same I would advise you to do 30 minutes of moderate activity and in between do some high intensity activity if you want to make it fun, go for something like Zumba. If you enjoy dance, put yourself a disc on, a Zumba disc, or put yourself um, any channel where there's songs and just dance and do it like, you know, do any movements you want. Just make it fun, but make yourself feel you've done some exercise. Your muscles are working. They're feeling something. You're feeling a little bit breathless. It's really important. You don't have to do all your exercise in one go. You can do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes in the evening. But the better way to do this is to try and stay active throughout the day. So one thing about this, what has been found in research is also, it's not about just the amount of exercise that helps. It's the sitting is also a problem. So like we're gonna be sitting now for an hour, this is actually bad for our health. So what is good is in between every 30 minutes to get up from your chair, even if you're just going to do a stretch or do some squats, or you can get up and simply just sit down, get up and sit down. So I used to do this in my clinic, in between patients, I used to get up and sit down, get up and sit down. So that's a nice squat. It's a good strengthening exercise. But if you carry on doing it, you also start getting a bit breathless because it also becomes an aerobic cardio exercise. All of these are really important. So for the exercise, 30 minutes of moderate activity in between some interval training, high intensity interval training every day. This is a minimum. This is not what you're, if you can, you, ideally to lose weight, you need to do more. This is just to stay healthy. So I would recommend start with half an hour, build it up, build your capacity, try and make it 
maybe half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, in between, stay active. When you're having a break from your work or whenever you get a minute, you go up and down the stairs a few times. Or you just get up and sit down on your chair. Or you just jog on the spot. Or you, even when I'm brushing my teeth, sometimes I start doing squats. When I think I haven't done squats today or, you know, I just start doing it when I'm brushing my hair or <laughs> drying my hair. I start doing something when I remember it. But you have to keep remembering it because it's just not going to happen otherwise. We're busy. We all have things to do. So sitting continuously has been found to be linked with cardiovascular disease, with increased weight, with all the other problems, the diabetes, everything. Sitting continuously is bad. So we need to get up every 30 minutes for at least one minute and do some activity. Just remind yourself. The best way to do this is get uh, either an Apple Watch or any sort of monitor on your wrist. Keep it on your wrist in the morning. Check, you know, what you've been doing, what you haven't been doing and have a goal of 30 minutes of exercise every day. 300 calories minimum to burn every day, it'll tell you. And you're sitting, you know, it tells you to stand every, it reminds you that you haven't stood and just make sure you stand every hour minimum but ideally every half an hour and do some activity, exercise. So aerobic exercise, high intensity exercise, all of these things, they're good for our heart, they're good for our muscle making, which we start to lose from the age of 30. We start losing muscle. Now, the next thing I need to talk about is muscle. Muscle is really, really important. Indians don't seem to have enough of it for some reason. We need to build muscle. It's harder for women to build muscle than it is for men, but we need to build it because we are losing our muscle from the age of 30. It, it goes down every year, every decade, it's going down. So we need to maintain that muscle. Muscle is really important because what it does, now what muscle does, it has many roles. It, keep, it helps you burn calories, is number one. It helps you burn calories. What There is a storage in our muscle of glucose gets stored in our muscle. When there is, when you do exercise, it stores in into your muscle. When you're exercising, you're able to release that uh, glycogen store where your glucose is trapped and you can empty that store. And when your blood sugar has gone up again, that blood sugar can go back into your muscle. So what I'm trying to say is it is a, it is a place for your glucose to hide. It is also a place for when you're doing exercise for you to use your calories from there. So it is a very important, it has a very important role in weight loss, in your metabolism, in your insulin resistance, because in type 2 diabetes, we are resistant to the insulin. It doesn't work well. It's not managing to get glucose into the cells. Now tell me if I'm going into too much detail and I, should I just stick to the basic points, what you need to do? Because mm -hmm. um, oh, very in-depth and very, really very helpful. Uh, very, very amazing. I don't want to make it too much that it becomes difficult to follow. What I need, what I need to tell you is muscle is important. It's very clear. Yeah, muscle is really important. We need to build this muscle. It will protect you against diabetes. It will help you come out of diabetes. It will help you lose weight. So uh, build this muscle. How do we build it? We need to do some strengthening exercises. Strengthening exercises are exercises which are either anti-gravity, so like up and down, you're using your arms up and down. This is anti-gravity, yeah? We are against our gravity, which is pulling us down. We are lifting our arms up. So things like Bhangra, things like, um, you know, any sort of dance where you have upper, up this type of movement is very good for you. Very good for your upper arms. Things like press-ups against a wall, you can start off, then you can do it on the floor. You can do, uh, that's for upper body, is good for your chest. This type of movement, I've made a video on um, exercises, you know, like this type of anything that you're involving your muscles to go against resistance. You are going like you're pushing forward, you know, you're pushing it forward like this. Using weights is a good way. And um, you can start off gentle with just one kilogram weight or two kilogram weight. You can even start off with a bag of like if you've got flour or whatever small bags of um, besan or something, you can have in both hands and just do like this biceps curl anything you just get some small weights is the easiest way to do it or join a gym there's plenty of equipment there ask a trainer to advise you on some resistance training how to do it it's very important okay it can be done without a gym it can be done without weights but for those who don't really you know get it how to do it 
I would suggest go to a gym and find the equipment. But you can all be done at home. Squats is very good for you. Squats is you can do gentle like sitting up and down or you can do it without the chair. But initially you can start with the chair. All you have to do is get up, come down, get up, come down. You don't sit fully, you just touch it and you just get up like this. Knees slightly apart, you just get up and sit down. And um, the more you do, the better. You're building up your strength in your lower muscles. Going up and down the stairs is a very good exercise. It's very good for your core. It's very good um, for your heart. It's very good for your lower legs. Um, there is an exercise called plank. I don't know if you've heard of plank. You lie on the floor like this with your arms across. Um, I've, I've done... Um, I don't know if I've done a video on this, but I have uh, I have done a tip. But basically, all you do is you, you lie like a plank uh, parallel to the floor and your arms are forward like this, They're resting on your elbows and your feet. And um, you, you can look this up. Plank is a very good exercise for the whole body. You have to keep your back straight. You do that for starting off for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, building up like that for 40 seconds. Do it daily. That's a very good. You have to do this um, training because this is actually something that protects against diabetes and also helps you with weight loss. It's very important. It also keeps our aligned body aligned. It helps your joints to have strong muscles. It keeps your bones strong and um and it's good for our overall health, um, reducing the risk of all the illness, all the things that are connected with weight gain, um, like metabolic illness and heart disease, stroke, etc. Um, what else? So next, after exercise, so you can do that. If you do that every day for a few minutes, you only have to do it a few minutes, or you can do it three or four times a week. It's up to you, but it's important to do. If you add in five minutes every day, it'll be superb. Um, so aerobic exercise, high intensity exercise, and I mentioned about um, the strengthening. With aerobic, I say there's very there's lots of things you can do. Zumba, jo jogging, skipping, running, riding a bike, swimming. You can when you're going shopping, just walk brisk. When you're you know I I even run in between. I run like when I've got <laughs> sometimes in when I'm outside in a um, in a shopping area. I will actually run from one place to the other. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm getting my aerobics done. There isn't much time to get it done otherwise. You know, you either have a structured time that you're doing it or you do it in between throughout the day. And I just look at my watch. Yeah, okay, I've done 10 there. So that's how to do it. You have to fit it in. You have to be mindful of it, that I have to do my exercise. I haven't done it today. Um, after exercise comes your um, sleep. Sleep is probably the most important thing. Because if you don't sleep well, you won't eat right the next day, okay? And, um, you know, I just missed something in the diet, which I'll mention in a minute. But if you don't sleep well, you'll be grumpy. You will want to eat sugar-containing foods. You will want to eat saturated fat-containing foods. You will just want food. You will want to lie about. You won't want to do any activity the next day. You will be craving for caffeine, okay? You will not be able to do the exercise you want to do. So sleep is really important. Not only is it actually important to be to know what to eat and drink, but it actually regulates our body. It's a cleansing time. When we go to sleep, we are cleansing our brain. If this is scientific. It cleans our brain. It cleans off toxins. It improves our memory. Um, it is doing lots of work during the sleep. There is a lot of activity going on. It's very important to get a good stretch of seven to eight hours overnight. And it's also important that you sleep at the same time. You wake up at the same time. You have your the sun regulates everything. The sun regulates our body clock, and we are t we are shutting it down. What we do is we stay up till 11, 12, we'll be on the phone, we'll be, um, you know, in unnatural light, we'll keep our brain, no, 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 I don't want to go to sleep yet, I'm watching TV, I'm doing this, I'm having a party, I'm going to a restaurant, and then we are telling our brain, no, you're, you're talking rubbish, I want to do this right now, and we are shutting down that circadian rhythm and disrupting it, we are affecting our health long term, it doesn't matter how much exercise you do, it doesn't matter how much you try to um, lose weight, but if you're not sleeping well, you are not doing yourself any good. So just remember that sleep is very important, you have to sort it out one way or the other. Now, um, I have done videos on sleep as well, so please have a look at them, uh, there'll be more information. Now, um, 
So try and keep it most days a regular routine. Yes, occasionally you have a night where you can't, you know, for some reason you're going out fine, you know, there's going to be things. But generally trying to sleep within the time you're meant to sleep, maximum 11 o'clock, wake up early around, you know, whenever you need to wake up, but have a good stretch of good quality sleep because it's, it is important. And the fourth thing is to do stress management and relaxation techniques. So things like yoga, things like mindfulness, meditation. And again, I've done videos on these as well, um, on meditation and uh, mindfulness. It is really important that we try to relax. We do breathing exercises when we're feeling stressed. We try and take a moment to just do something we want to do to relax. We do yoga. All of these things will keep our stress levels low. And stress is something that actually, again, will help you gain weight and help you increase your blood sugar levels because of the imbalance that it does in our body and it also makes you want to eat the wrong food. So we want to de-stress ourselves. We need to try and relax every day. We try to be mindful. Mindfulness is about being living in that moment, feeling that moment, not thinking too much, worrying about tomorrow or the day after. Yes, we have to plan. Yes, we have to do things. But in this moment, I'm talking to a friend or I'm watching this program or I'm eating a meal. So when you're eating your meal, try and eat it with your family at a table. Try and be mindful, talk less, be conscious of what you're putting in your mouth. Whatever you've got on your plate, be mindful of it. Don't have doubles. You've decided this is your meal. That's it. When you're talking and you're not mindful, you'll eat more than you need to eat. You'll increase your calorie intake. So these are the things. Um, just trying to think. I think that's basically it. So just to summarize, you know, you, you, you've got your diet management, you've got exercise plan, sleep plan, uh, relaxation, weigh yourself daily at the same time, monitor your weight, monitor your exercise by having um, some sort of device, measure your waist every week and um, and keep a note of your BMI as well and see what that is after a period of time. In eight weeks, you should easily lose around 10 to 15 kilograms by following this. And when you do, you're going to be so happy and gradually you can make changes according. No, you, you don't have to stick to the 800 calorie after that. You may need to for a few more months, but you may be able to adjust a bit. But I would still keep the same lifestyle. It means the exercise I would not get rid of, the sleep I would keep the same, the relaxation I would keep the same, portion size keep it low. You can you might be able to increase it a bit, but generally the way you need to see it is eating less actually has health benefits and fasting has a lot of health benefits. Fasting has been scientifically shown to reverse a lot of damage that's happening in our body like inflammation. It improves our insulin um, sensitivity, it improves our blood sugar control, it improves, it, uh, reduces um, the toxins, it, it has lots of benefits doing fasting in between. So it's not a bad thing, we're not torturing ourselves, going on a low diet, the way you need to see it is actually we are helping ourselves. Right, again it's going to run out, so let's go to questions, I will stop here, uh, I've been talking for too long, and... Um, so does anybody have a question? You can just um, unmute yourself or put your hand up. Hi, Molly. Uh, uh, Vandana here. Vandana, uh, you yeah, I, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm just unmuting myself. I don't want to show myself. Okay. I'm down with COVID. I'm down with COVID. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, like, you know, if uh, how many meals should you take if you're trying to lose weight? How many meals? Right. So this there isn't any uh, fixed um, like that, that I say you should eat this many meals or that many meals. Basically, what I were you here from the beginning? Yes, I was. Yeah. Okay. So there's different things you can do. So fasting is it can be done in different ways. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend restrict your caloric intake over the day. All right, yeah. You have to reduce it to um, mm -hmm. eight. Are you diabetic or just trying to lose weight? Uh, uh, no, just trying to lose weight. I would apply the same principle because it will work. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I would restrict your calories to a maximum of a thousand per day. 
You know? Right. But okay. depending on what you first calculate your weight, your BMI, do all of those things and see how much you need to lose to become BMI less than 23, waistline less than 31.5 inches. You can't tell how much you need to lose for that. But BMI, at least uh, you keep it in your mind. Your waist, you keep into your mind. Weight, you keep in your mind. And I would say, because Indians need to be at the lower end of the, of the weight chart, not in the middle, but at the lower mm -hmm. end. Yeah. So right. um, we need to be lean or at least thin or moderately thin so um mm -hmm. i would say you restrict your in terms of how many meals well it depends if you're hungry in the morning have a breakfast you know, right wake up after a fast make yourself fast 12 nights 12 hours overnight mm -hmm. so if you're finishing your meal at seven uh, try to finish it at a time that you get 12 hours overnight no food right yeah morning that's one really good thing that that should be done for everybody we should all be doing that and sometimes we can't because we're eating late so if we yeah. eat a bit earlier then we could then that can happen in the morning uh you can either to make that 12 hours depends on your routine in the morning if you have to go to work or something you have to uh, if you're hungry eat your breakfast just keep the calories lower yeah mm -hmm. At lunchtime, mm -hmm. if you're hungry at that time, rather than saying, I'm not going to eat, I'm starving, but I'm not going to eat, eat something, have a small meal. So I would say it's, you know, it depends what you're used to. But if you're happy to skip a meal, it won't do any harm. Okay. Yeah. The mm -hmm. If you can keep it low and keep to a plan that you can stick to and stick to for a minimum of eight weeks, but even after that, you keep it healthy because it's not just calories. It's actually what we eat that makes a difference. So let's say if I was to get 100 calories from eating some chocolate bar, maybe half a chocolate bar, yeah, mm -hmm. and the same number of calories from eating a banana or an apple, depending on the, right. the banana and apple is still the healthy choice because it has fiber in it, has vitamins in it, it has um, nutrients in it, minerals in it, whereas that bar of chocolate, it just has fat, sugar. Lots what about dark chocolate? All right. If you're trying to lose weight, yeah. I would keep it away. Okay. okay? It's full of yeah. calories. Now, because if you, if you look at the back of the dark chocolate, you will see um, how much sugar, how much calories, yeah? If you really mm -hmm. feel like something sweet, try mm -hmm. to get used to eating fruit as a sweet option. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Crave mm -hmm. sugar when we're tired. It happens when right. you know, if I'm tired. I wake up in the morning. I'm tired. I didn't get a good night's sleep. Sometimes you feel like something sweet. When you mm -hmm. start doing a good level of exercise, sleeping well, eating fruits and vegetables, and eating whole, you know, unprocessed foods, and start eating healthily, and you you're you're feeling good. You don't actually feel the need for it so much. Occasionally, everybody feels like it, but try to go for something like maybe peanut butter on apple or go for uh, Greek yogurt and put in there some berries, things like that, and make it your alternative. Occasionally, if you really feel like something sweet, you go for 90% dark chocolate. Right. 90% and a small 90%, piece. Yeah. Eat a small piece. Okay, small piece. And what about dates? What about dates? Dates, dates, also very dates are not, not going to help you with weight loss. They're not going to help you with diabetes. This is something actually good you reminded me. Dried okay. fruit is a no-go area for if you're trying to lose weight. Wait, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, and diabetics are trying to lose weight. And um, if you're trying to lose weight anyway, dried fruit is no. No raisins, no dates, no, um, no, no dried fruit during this period because they are packed. There's a lot of sugar. Okay. A lot of sugar. All right. um, very high concentration. Mm -hmm. um, but when you are out of that stage, occasionally, if you feel like a date, it is better than eating a chocolate bar. Yeah, or with sugar. Cake. Yeah, yeah, it's better than eating something that's processed. A date is a healthy food, but only if you are a healthy weight and have a healthy yes. lifestyle. If you're eating it when you're overweight, you're just burdening yourself with sugar and calories. Right. Yeah. You will just build around your waistline. Mm-hmm. If, if somebody, if let's say you, some at a moment, you felt like sugar and you ate it, yeah? Yeah. The best thing to deal with it is to burn off that sugar straight away. So it's yeah. not, it's not so, um, <laughs> like, it's not always going to be possible, but the best way to deal with it is because that sugar has to be used that you've just consumed. Yes. Right? yes if it's absolutely. not used, it's going to be stored. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it's already extra, it'll store as fat. So you need to store yeah. it. You don't want it to be stored. You want to use it. So if you've eaten a piece of something, like you felt like a piece of dark chocolate, you ate it, and you know it's extra because it's outside your caloric intake and it's additional and you're trying to lose weight, what I would do is go for a run or just you know jog on the spot or do some um, a little bit more exercise than you normally do and just feel that you've burnt it off now. And But you'll have to do it for quite a while. It's not like it's not equivalent. It's not like 10 minutes of exercise is burning off your... It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Not as simple to burn off, but you need to do something to make you feel okay. I'm, I've done something after that to maybe try and burn it off, and be mindful. Not don't eat it every day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah thank you. To thank you. Your treats. Yeah. But you. But um, when you're diabetic, we have to be very careful because you want to come out of this diabetes. Preeti, do you have any questions? Because you're diabetic. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. I have done already question the and you have give me answer as well. I I Doing well. I asked you about the banana. You said banana is okay. So yes, it's fine. Okay, but don't have it every day. So what I would say is vary things and yeah. get to like banana is okay if it's within your caloric intake of that eight hundred that you're calculating. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a better option than having something like another chapati. Well, I have totally cut off the chapati i haven't eat any chapati and i'm doing 40 minute 30 to 40 minute exercise every day in the morning after my breakfast brilliant what are you doing in that exercise that's just doing the zumba bollywood dance do you feel tired do you feel breathless very very yes very sweaty very tired Good. within 30 minutes is sweaty is so much Good. Okay, try and build that a bit more. Like my heartbeat is going above then 140, 150 like that. Okay, good. And have you lost in the last two weeks? I, I lost 8 kg nearly. Good, good. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Just carry it on. I am. I, I was a start eight, from eight, uh, 80, 82. I, 88 I was. And now I'm 88. One, 88 81. 81. Kg. Okay. That's good. So that's within two weeks. Yeah, when I talk to you after that. Yeah, it's been about two weeks. I, I would tell you to just keep carrying on with that and drink lots of water. In the beginning, yeah. when you lose weight, you will lose water as well. You will actually lose muscle as well. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to keep that yeah, muscle. Yeah, which is that exercise what I'm doing there is have lots of muscles exercise. So is that good benefit for there? Good. It's the time is coming less. So do you want to carry on the, the meeting next one? Then let them know. Yeah, have you got more questions? Should I, um, should I read? Does anybody have? No, I'm fine now. Anybody got questions? No. Okay. You covered pretty end? too much. Yeah. Should we end it? <laughs> yeah. Are you happy to end or do you want me to start again? I'm fine. If anybody wants any question, then you can open. Oh, do you have anything? No. No, nobody. Okay, should we end it here? So hopefully yeah. um, you'll benefit and, um, you know, look at it again, maybe because I spoke, I tried to speak a bit fast. I gave a lot of information, um, the recording I'll make available.